Hello, 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 hello. How's everybody doing? Breaking the yoke of bondage through the power of the Word of God. Join Pastor Jackson and friends as we rightly divide the Word of Truth. You can find My Gospel Soul on Facebook, Twitter, but you can also find me, Denise Jackson, on Facebook and Twitter as well. Now, keep up with us. Also, on the Denise Jackson Ministries website. That's at www.denisejacksonministries.yolasite.com. And remember, with God, all things are possible. Hello, how's everybody doing out there? Welcome to Sisters United. Welcome to Sisters United. Uh, welcome to the show. Um, I'm hoping you get, you're able to hear me. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, get started, get rolling. Hello, hello, hello. Who's on the line with yeah. us? This is Southie. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I am good doing deal, good. Good deal. Good deal. I'm glad okay, y'all. Okay, Mrs. Pizza. Oh. I'm sorry. Okay. I just said this is Keisha and I'm on. Good morning, everybody. Okay. All right. Good Great. morning. Good morning. We have a technical difficulty. Hello. Um, can you? Yes, ma'am. I'm here. I'm here. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you so much, ladies, for getting on with this. Uh, um, this is Sister United. We have um, Tammy Lillian, and we have uh, Miss Keisha. Miss Keisha, let's start out by saying hi to everybody that's on. Good morning and hello, sisters. <laughs> How's it going this morning? Um, everything's fine and rocking and rolling over here. How y'all do? All right, I'm doing right. excellent. I'm doing good. Good. All right. We have, and we have Miss Rita. Miss Rita, uh, let's go ahead and yes. you tell everybody hi. Well, good morning, Miss Rita. She's here. How's everyone? Hey, Rita. Hey, Rita. Hey. Hey. Oh, yeah. And last but definitely not least, we have Miss Soul Tree with us. Go ahead and tell, tell everybody hi. Good morning, everyone. This is Soul Tree. I am her, and I thank y'all. How are y'all doing this morning? Well, good morning, Great. Soul Tree. Good yeah. morning. <laughs> So, good deal, good deal. Yeah. Uh, I want to be to hear, uh, tell us briefly about your week, you know, what you got going on um, in your life, you know, anybody, anything you want the audience base to know, Miss Keisha. Uh, my week was pretty good, just uh, working on a few things. Um, so I've always been very good at writing. So I am actually in the process of writing a urban nonfiction um, short book or nova, novella, I think that's what they call. So it's really interesting because it's coming together um, really good. I'm really amazed. I haven't, um, I shared some with Sophie, 
But I, you know, and at the kind of very beginning, and you know, she liked it. So I've just been working on my book and sewing masks, sewing masks, and working on my book. It's untitled oh, right now, no title. So. All right. Oh, don't you? Oh, good deal, good deal. Miss Rita. What you got going on this week? Tell us about something you want um, everybody to know that you're working on. Um, you want them to to support you in. Um, well, right now, as usual, I am um, working on my business. Um, I'm working on constantly uh, building my website. Well, actually, it's under construction, but um, Precious Moments Photography and Designs. I do photography. I also do graphic design. And um, I also have a, a Christian a baseline business. Uh, it's called Royal Tees on Facebook, and it's a Christian-based shirt line that's basically speak inspirational uh, messages to people. Um, I always say, uh, wear a shirt, don't wear a blank. I always have a message on your shirt. And I, it's not about the shirt, but it's about the message that on the shirt that may inspire somebody else's day. Uh, so I've been working building that um, as well. Like I said, it's my photography. I've been having a few photo shoots for a senior class um, right now, so that's kind of what I've been working on building and branding and writing policies and procedures and all of that wonderful good stuff. So, yeah, that's what I have going on. You've been busy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah, trying to stay busy. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. ma'am. That's always a good thing. All right, Miss Sultry. I know Miss Sultry got a lot of stuff going on. I get the opportunity to see a lot of stuff that she's doing and, and sharing it and so forth. So I want to hear what Miss Sultry got going with her production company. Well, right now um, I have a lot of um, visuals that I'm putting into play. I was looking for a studio, but I think I found one to um, our host screening. So hopefully that will work out for me. I'm looking for models, male and female, for the visuals and that would like to act in um, some skits. And um, I also have my mugs now, the uh, host production mugs, and it says Truth Juice, so she said it, and I also have those available as well. Um, so I'm pretty much got my hands on a lot of things, and I'm excited about the, um, the journey that the good Lord has been sending me on, and he's walking me through it. And I'm walking by faith and not by sight. So I'm excited. Good all deal, good deal. Well, good deal. Super excited about what everybody got going on. Um, it's, that's always a good thing. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about this, uh, talk about a little bit about this um, social media page we got going. You know, we have a, the social media group as right. well as we have the page. The page has been just busting out at the seams. I am so excited. I get excited about little things. So because my thing is with the little things come big things. You know, it takes a whole lot of little things to become a big thing, but you got to have the little things in order to have the big things. So uh, we have the page. The page right now is at 300 plus following. Um, it's, or the, the following has been organically built. So um, we're not, we haven't paid for any ads or anything. This is just pure um, hard work um, sharing it and, and, you know, putting information out there, what we're doing and, and so forth. And so I'm so excited about that um, as well as I'm excited about the group. The group is um, building. We're um, trying to make sure we have lots of interaction with um, the group as well because we like to go back and use the group as uh, uh, what are we using for our topics, because we want to hear about what the people want to hear about. You know, we come over here and we have topics and so forth, but we also want to um, have, hear what other people want to hear, because that's what gives the, the group, that's what gives the, um, the um, it gives it substance, because not only we're talking about things that's important to dear and near to us, because that holds importance as well and what's important with, you know, our sisters, people that are peers and, and so forth. So I'm excited about that, and definitely let's keep that momentum going. Um, so 
And but just to tell you a little bit about myself um, personally, what I'm doing, I'm still promoting my book. Um, what your refund? Uh, why your refund is so low? Is a book that's designated for more so to aspiring business owners and uh, business owners that are in the beginning stages because I want people to be aware of what's going on with their business because, of course, we always want to make money whether we work in a nine-to-five or we're deciding we want to step into the world of entrepreneurship, but the world of entrepreneurship is a, a, a horse of a different color, especially when it right. comes down to your taxes. So um, that's what this book is for. It is is for anybody that's in business, but, you know, definitely for those who are um, – going into that world so they won't get that big surprise when it's time to do taxes and they can't figure out why they're making they may maybe they may even be making less than what they was making with the nine to five and their refund has gone down. So um it's to help people understand. So that's what what I'm I'm personally I'm doing. So I'm pre selling my book. So anybody's interested in getting the book, it's twenty dollars for shipping and handling. Um, I can provide the website for you if you go to my page. You can just find me at Tammy Lilly on my personal page or my bit my um my um business page is Tammy M Lilly. So either way you type Tammy Lilly in, both of my pages come popping up. So definitely, you know, reach out to me and inbox me if you're interested in um pre ordering a book as well as <laughs> excuse me, I have business advertising opportunities in there as well because I want to inspire these readers as well, not only give them some some substance, but also inspire them and let them know that there's so many other people out there doing businesses and they was at where they was at where they're currently at and that they can do it because, you know, um somebody else did it and it helped it helped. So right. um definitely that's what that's what um I'm working on and um so um, let's go ahead and, and dig on off in, in um, Sisters Unite. Let's get some topics rolling. Let's get some, uh, some, some minds to working. Let's get some thought process and things that, um, that's going on in the world. So as everybody knows, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, we are supposed to be uh, rolling back into normalcy. Um, so... Um, I pray and hope everybody's out there being safe, um, social yep. distancing, and uh, just being mindful about your space and um, what you're doing and how you handle the things. Wash your hands. That is so, so, so important uh, when you're right. out about the public. They say keep your hands out of your face, keep your hands out of your eyes and and, and so forth. And um, when you're shopping, um, don't go into panic mode but go into preparation mode. So leave yep. something for everybody else. And um, with I us totally in the agree. South, in Texas, um, I think, I believe all of us are in Texas. Those are in, who are in Texas who are close to the coast, the Galveston coast and the other coast, you know we're going off into hurricane season. So wow, right. we got a double whammy. We got a pandemic and we got a um uh, we got a, um, a a hurricane season coming about, so um, definitely make sure that you're you're being mindful and you're being in preparation mode, not panic mode, with that as well, um, because we know, so especially those in Houston, Houston will flood um, like nobody's business. So yeah, with a teaspoon of water, Houston will flood. Yeah, you sure right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. So what I want to go ahead and do, I want to. Yes, ma'am, definitely. But so what I want to go ahead and do is I want to go ahead and uh, call Miss Rita. Miss Rita up to the mic. And Miss Rita, what do you have on your mind that you want to talk about? And um, try, so we can chime in on it. Um, okay, so I saw this uh, post this morning that I thought was very interesting. Um, it's a little broad, but hey, I thought it was interesting. It's uh, um, he's in, I think he's a minister on Facebook, but he brought up the subject which made a lot of women upset um, that uh, they protect. He, he said a lot of women use 
um, their particular time of the month and flow, you know, keep it a little cute, but um, as a license to be, have a um, horrible attitude or do burst outs or whatever the case, I just, just to act the plump, out of, uh, you know, a fool or whatever, or have an attitude or be very emotional, whatever he stated, that they use that time of the month to kind of be out of control, which um, a lot of women, of course, react to the subject, and I thought that was very interesting considering coming from a man's perspective, someone that has never experienced what a woman has to go through. Um, wow. And I personally was kind of like, I, was, I wasn't offended, but I just kind of felt some kind of way because I'm like, technically, I mean, some people I can't, I, well, I can't really vouch because I can't, everybody's uh, situation is personal and different. So, wow. um, so I couldn't really get upset about it, but then I was like, how can you know when you, it's, it's a man's perspective and, um, some women may, I, I can't really vouch for that, but, you know, some women has, you have women that goes through endometriosis where they are in a lot of pain. Um, mm-hmm. And there is no pain medication that can actually take that pain away. So, of course, they're aggravated and, of course, they're irritated or whatever the um, the case may be that each woman may have. Because, like I said, each case scenario is different. And so he started making it as a spiritual thing, stating that, um, you know, you're supposed to have self control and this and this and that. You're not supposed to. And I'm like, and some people was chiming in and stating that some women are um, can use that as a license to be out of control, or some women just um, in uh, just have an attitude. Period. Uh, but it has nothing to do with their time of the month. And I just kind of thought that was pretty interesting how you took that and turned it into more of a spiritual thing because, like I said, I know personally my situation is different, and I know other people that has, like, you know, endometriosis or anything, you know, that concerning that causes them to be in a lot of pain or whatever they women issues are. So I thought that's, you know what, that's a pretty good topic to (laughs) – because, like I said, I I can't say, you know, everybody – emotional, your attitudes, your hormones are raging, or whatever the case may be during the time. So you may be extra emotional. You may be um, have an attitude, but you know how your spouse or whoever you're around know how to deal with you accordingly. Um, so I just thought I would bring that <laughs> because it's not a spiritual thing. I mean, in my personal opinion, it's not a spiritual thing because you are irritated, you are aggravated, you're in pain something that a man definitely can't vouch for. So I thought, I'm like, you don't even have that platform to even speak concerning this situation because technically you don't have one. So, yeah, <laughs> I guess I do feel some kind of way about it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I would like to chime in on that if that's Okay. Hello. Yes, uh-huh. Let us know okay. what you got to say about okay. that. That's, that's pretty heavy topic. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 but you know, my thing is this: How do a person that's never been through something tell you how you're supposed to react? That's my thing. Um, he's a man, and I guess that they, they would like to make feel like it's an excuse that we use. Um, your body goes through so many different things and emotions, so. I don't understand how people can say that we use that to be mean and ugly and hateful or, or just have an attitude for no reason. Like, how do you know that? Have you ever experienced what a woman has experienced is the question I would like to know. I, I want to know how did he get to that point where he felt it away. Is somebody doing something so bad that he feels like um, they're only doing it because they're in their cycle at this time of the month? I mean, to me, that's kind of crazy. How do you tell me something that's going on with my body that she's never experienced? I mean, right. <laughs> um, when 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 it is that time, I'm not the kind of person that um, do I have an attitude? Yes, because I don't even feel like being bothered. So much going on, and am I trying to have an attitude? No, uh, not. It's just that the body's going through so many different emotions and hormones are up and down, and 
you're hot and you're cold and you just, there's so much going on. It just I think it makes your body produce these feelings of like I don't want to, want to be touched. So I mean I don't know. I just think that's kind of strange to a man. Maybe if it was a woman, but a man say that he has no idea what we have to go through. Right. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. I'm like, hmm, interesting. That's strange. Like, how do you even have the work to have the nurse to say that? A guy told me before that when a woman was pregnant, um, he said, oh, I think y'all just be lying, um, uh, have an attitude and how my child wants this and wants that. And I was like, have you ever had a baby? And he's like, no. So when his wife got pregnant, he ate chocolate so much, he gained like 60 pounds. He's like, man, I can't stop eating this chocolate. I was like, why? I don't know. I keep praising. I said, my point is that she must have crossed over you and gave her praise or whatever. That's what my grandmother would say. But now you see that she couldn't control it. And you couldn't even control it yourself. You know what I'm saying? So he ended up gaining right. 60 pounds with his wife doing it. <laughs> so I'm like, he said, I'll never say that again. I said, my point is that. You know, you don't know what a woman's body goes through, what our hormones are doing to us. So you can't say that. Um, we're just using that to get our way. Right. Right. I think that's just like if us trying to say something concerning the man, something that we've never experienced. So I'm like, I wouldn't even put my mouth towards it because I, I can't, I can't um, relate because I've never been a man. So I can't say I wouldn't even – put myself in a situation to speak from a man's perspective because I am not a man. So I can't relate to what you may experience. You know, I can have my opinion, but that doesn't necessarily mean my opinion is correct. So um, that's kind of just how I felt with that. I was just like, that's very interesting. I, and I thought, so maybe we'll see what other people think about it. I'm going to make sure I'm not just crazy and thinking this on my own. like, I didn't. I didn't quite get it, and I was like, okay, maybe that's how I ask that question just to see what other people think about that. So, well, I think that people speak from a place from where they are. So maybe the um, the women around him are crazy and just doing stuff or whatever. But yeah, unless you are a male medical professional or maybe grew up with a house full of women, you know, or something like that. I mean, there's no way you can even relate. So why? Yeah, so, yeah, it's hormonal, it's, I mean, you know, just, I mean, you have some people that um, that have to take, like, um, pills to, you know, Paxil, and, I mean, you know, like, I work in medical, and I've seen a lot of different stuff, and it's like, you know, it, it's, um, you know, it, it's not a far um, reach out for um, attention, because really, to tell the truth, you don't want attention. You want to be left alone and not look at and just you want to put everybody else up on that desk so you could just walk freely without even eyes on you. So that that's my look. So yeah. So yeah, that that was fun. Kind of... People are um, when people feel like they have arrived or when they are in like certain positions and stuff like that that um you know they want to have profound um moments. So they come up with all of this stuff, you know, just, I say crazy stuff, but it's really not crazy if that's how they feel, if that's really how they feel. But a lot of the times I think it's just, well, you know, I, I have an audience to listen, so I'm just going to say. But, right. um, yeah, right. you see from, from places where places that you come from. I say that all the time. So maybe he has a bunch of, you know, outlandish, crazy, I, I mean, you know, I don't know going on with him, so yeah, he, he can't speak to him, and I wouldn't even entertain that or whatever. I would probably make a comment in that post to the pastor that his mic is off because, right. <laughs> you know, it's not, right. you know, so, yeah, not being just right. but your mic is off, yeah. That's my thing as a man, yeah. you never what he's going on through, so how do you say what he should and shouldn't do, that? Mm. But that's right. his opinion. That's his opinion, and I can't leave that his opinion. You know, but that's how it goes. Which was that was definitely a 
that actually was a pretty, pretty, pretty um, um, deep topic right there. I mean, it's it's a uh, it's a thing that some people are afraid to say, you know, about a yeah. woman's uh, time of the month, and it's it's some things that some people just kind of over boundaries with that. And and the bottom line is, if you ain't never been a woman, then you can't really, you don't have, to me, you don't have no room to speak on it as far as on that level, you know. And, yeah. and I'm, like, I'm a type of person, I'm like this, you know, there are some women that do use that possibly as an excuse, but there are women out there that have legitimate, you know, issues, you know. Your hormones are all right. over the place. Um, you know, I can remember growing up, that I had a cousin that used to take birth control to regulate her system because her system, even as a little kid, you know, and she didn't, she didn't, she wasn't like, she was just, you know, kids don't think like that. You know, kids don't think, well, I'm going to manipulate this situation because I'm on my, my, I'm on my period. The kid thing is, okay, I don't feel right. So, you know, they're acting according to how they feel. So uh, it's a real Mm -hmm. legitimate issue about um, right. uh, women and when they're going through certain things. Some women go through that at that time of the month and don't keep a beat. You'll never know they was on it. They, they won't act no different. They don't feel no different. It's just what it is. They do what they got to do to take care of it. And then once this, you know, once that time has passed, then they go back to, you know, doing the things that they don't need to do in order to take care of it. My thing is all about, I think it's just all about humanity. It's life is about experience. Life is about having compassion for other people's feelings in that situation. So I agree. Just right. because you don't understand something, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have a right to jump on it. And I think as a pastor, I think he should have not crossed that line. You know, I, yeah. I don't think a pastor should ever discuss anything about a woman's body like that because he don't know, you know. In the in the biblical times, women used to, you know, it was considered an unclean period, you know. Women, you didn't bother that woman. That You you wouldn't mm-hmm. touch that woman. Mm-hmm. There's a story in the Bible when it right. talks about they went in there looking for, um, I can't remember the name of the person, they went in there looking for the person and the woman was sitting on a, uh, a, a, a case or what have you. And they, yeah. they came in and looking for the person and they he, she said he was like, well, what's in that right there? And she's like, she told me she was there, she was at her time of month, and they did not touch it because a woman was considered unclean um, at that time, mm-hmm. so they didn't bother it. And actually, it was you know a story that she told, but she told it for good reason to protect the person that was in the house that they right. were trying to harm. So I mean, but that's the only time it really talks about it in the Bible, but then to talk about it in a, I don't think it should have been brought up by a pastor, in my personal opinion. I think that's something that she should have left untalked about, even though everything about life is God and everything, and God is everything in life. I think he should have left that to somebody who had understanding. And I just like a, a male issue. You know, you got males that have, you know, issues at certain times of their life, they may not have exactly time of the month, but they have times in their life where they have certain mm-hmm. um, sexual immoralities such as ED and so forth. And so do we have, since you opened up that Pandora's box, talk about women, so does that mean that women have a right to speak about your some, your ED that you're going through? You know, they don't, it's supposed to be, you know, none talked about, you know, if somebody say, well, he has ED, you know, <laughs> there's a, a um, thing, a laughter thing. So I think it's just a level of respect on both on both sides, whether it's a man issue or there's a woman issue. But the bottom line is certain things are designated for, well, all things are designated for certain genders, certain races, certain class of people certain ages of people, you know. I can't tell you about an older person's experience, just like an older person cannot really tell you much about my experience in this day and time. So right, I think right. it should be just a level of respect, and I don't think nobody should have the right to jump down on somebody's throat and say, well, you're just using that as an excuse because that may not be the situation. And if it was, that's not your place to say it. 
Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree with you. I think that that was not his place, and especially from you coming from a point of being a man and not a woman. You will never understand that, what our body goes through. Yeah, I just think there's, um, like you said, should be some boundaries Mm -hmm. um, that we should cross (laughs) Um, because you have no room to speak on that subject. And I I was just kind of, you know, I didn't know if to take it offensive, but a lot of women, of course, come in and, and take it offensive because, I mean, it's coming from a man's perspective versus, you know, if it was a woman that had said something. But even still, even if a woman had said something about it, I still can't really, I still wouldn't be uh, put my opinion on it because every woman's case is different. Every, each, each case scenario is different. Like I said, you have women that have a normal system and then you have women that has endometriosis. They have cysts. They have uh, fibroids, it's, it can go really, you know, which causes everything, every case scenario to be different. So you can't really, um, you know, put, you know, y- your mouth on somebody else's situation when you don't, wow. technically you don't know how what they feel or what they're going through. So I try to keep yeah. the line, don't cross a certain line when it comes to um, touchy subjects like that. So, yeah. That's, that's just kind of what I had. Okay. Good subject. Good subject. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and, and move to Miss um, Sotry. Miss Sotry, what is your topic of discussion today? Well, my topic of discussion for the day is I've seen on our page. Um, do you need the pen code to your man's cell phone? I want to talk about that because there's so many people out here that just don't have, they have trust issues. And I get it because somebody else might have made you feel like uh, you need need this information. I can say this. I don't need my husband's passport. Do I know it? Yeah, he used to go to the phone. Whichever one is the closest. You know, that's it's like a phone. It's like a house phone. Anybody can get up in him. It doesn't matter if the phone rings. I can answer it. Oh, hold on and give it to him because he's not close. So I don't need this thing to code. He don't need mine. He have it so that he can get into it when he's going to use it or when I want to use it. But um, the only reason why we have had code is because if we lose our phone, we don't want nobody to get it. Other than that, you know, before we were um, just free-balling it. It didn't have no passcode, and we lost the phone before. So that's the main side of the passcode. So I don't need a passcode. I have it, but I don't need it. So... I don't have a trust issue. And my thing is this. Whatever's done in a dog will surely come through. And as my mom says, it's going to come out in a wash will surely come out free. So if you're going to lose the phone, you're going to find, and you might not find what you want to find. I think that um, you have to trust your mate. And if you can't trust them, then uh, you need to reevaluate their relationship. Good point. Very good point, Ms. Sultry. Um I know for me personally, um, I have a passcode on my phone only because I have a special needs kid and I don't want him to be on my phone when I'm not around. So that's the only reason I even have a passcode on my phone and my husband knows the passcode on my phone. I set the passcode on my husband's phone before he lost his phone. So, uh, of course, I do it because I'm the one who set it. But right. I think if you do have passcodes on their phone, I don't think um, it should be uh, a big issue of your spouse having it. If you have them on your phone, I don't think it should be a big secret of what uh, have your your uh, spouse or significant other being on the phone. I I agree, Miss Sochi. I think you need to revalue that um, that relationship if it gets to a point where um, she can't have it because or he can't have it. Because my thing is, what are you hiding from that person that's supposed to be your soulmate or that's the person that you're with at the moment? So um, is it is that relationship as, you know, good as you think it is or solid as you think it is if they have to hide something? Um, I have yes, to I do. hide something. Yeah, because, I mean, to me it's like um, people ask me, how you have each other passcode? Why wouldn't we? We supposed to be one. 
You know, I mean, why am I going to hire a past code? When you hire things that make people feel like you uh, you have something to hide, when you don't want to know your past, what is in your phone that you don't want me to see? And I don't have anything in my phone that my husband cannot see. I don't care what it is. Whatever it is, me and him talk so much, so we know a lot about each other, so there's no need for me to hide something in my phone. You know, mm-hmm. so I, that I've never understood why people uh, – get mad at a woman or their man about if they need a passcode. Because yeah. my thing is the passcode is a passcode. And like I said, the reason why we have it is because our phone got locked. one of our phones got locked before and we just didn't want people out and through the phone. So good there, good there. Uh, I see it I feel the same way. This is teaching. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. All right then. I just feel like if I can't trust you, I don't need you. Um, anybody calling on your phone, they're not calling me. So I don't. it's not a need for me to, um, you know, to answer a phone. I, I think that when it comes to things like that, either like um, I believe Sochi said, it's trust issues. And, um, you know, you, you can um, not trust the person away from you, way away from you. And um, yeah. that's to me, you know, um, I am – I mean, I don't care if it's a relationship, if we have a friendship, if, you know, a, a, a sistership or whatever it is, whatever kind of ship it is. Um, you know, I, I'm a very loyal, you know, upstanding person, a person, and it makes me mad, you know, when people um, challenge my trust because, you know, I know how I am. So those are people that I kind of keep away from me because they, they have a tendency to enrage me, you know. So I'm not answering your phone. Um, when me and my daughter's dad were together, he didn't even have a cell phone before me, but he decided he needed a phone. So he would leave it at home all the time. He would leave it all the time. That phone would sit there, and the only touching I would do to that phone is when it rained so much it got on my nerves, and then I would turn it off. You know, I don't, I can't tell him who called. And he would ask, well, who was it? I don't know. I don't know. They wasn't calling me. They were calling you, but they were disturbing me. So I cut the phone off, you know. So, um, you know, and that's just one of those things like that. Don't touch my phone. Not because I have something to hide. It's just because it's not yours. It's mine. You know, um, <laughs> you're not going to find anything in there. I mean, with the way phones are these day and times, anyway, if somebody want to hide something for you, they give you that phone all day long. They have codes where you can hide numbers and do all of this crazy foolishness, you know, that people sit up and do. But, no, I don't have an issue with you touching my phone because you're going to find something. I have an issue, issue with you touching my phone because it's mine. You know, it, it belongs to me. You keep your hands off of it. Um, you know, that's how I feel. And then if you go looking for something, you're going to find you something, but it's not going to be what it really is. It's going to be something that appears to be something totally different, and then you end up looking so foolish in the end. So thing is, just don't do it. If it's somebody you can't trust or you are a person that's just so tough that you have tough issues. Get yourself together before you sit up and try to bring somebody else into your mess and your foolishness. Because nobody yeah. has time for it. That's just how I feel. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, Miss Keisha, what, what do you guys say? No, that was Miss Keisha that talked about. Miss Rita, you want to chime in on this subject real quick? We're winding down. Um, yeah, uh like uh, someone just said, um, if I feel like uh, I can't trust you, then I don't basically need to be with you. So um, the code, pin code is not an issue. Because like you said before, like I put one on my phone, you know, for in case the phone get lost or whatever case scenario like that. Um, mm-hmm. That way nobody else that's an outsider can access it. But I wow. believe each person p- should have, you know, each other's pen. Uh, pen. I mean, because technically I just feel if you're in a relationship, there shouldn't, there shouldn't be no hidden secrets. So um, if I need your phone to do something, I should feel free to be able to do your phone without feeling like um, you're hiding something. So, um yeah, the pin code. That's an, and I feel like if a person don't want you to have a pin code, then sometimes you feel like that person is high. Some that doesn't necessarily mean they are, but um, it's just kind of the way you feel because it's just like I, why well, I can't have your? Are you hiding something? And then that's when the trust issue become a, a issue. That's when the trust become an issue. Like you feel like as though I can't trust you, but. Right. 
Yeah. I personally put one, like I said, because I've lost phones where um, and it didn't have a PIN code. So now you have access to all my pictures, all my information. And wow. that's kind of why I put it. I sit my phone down. I don't want everybody just to be open and have access to what I have on my phone. I'm talking about an outsider. So um, right. that's yeah. one reason why I would put one on mine. But as far as a relationship or a spouse or whatever, I mean, I personally wouldn't have anything to hide. So, um, and I will hope he would be the same way. So, yeah, that's just kind of how I feel about it. Oh, I got you, got you, got you. Um, Martha, you know, you you said the made the statement, and I think I've heard it more than once from um, a couple of you ladies. Um, if you have, why is it that? You don't want to let you know. Well, let us know the pet. Let your spouse know, or your significant other, or your girlfriend, boyfriend, your person you're supposed to be your boo thing with, not know the password because you may not be doing nothing, but it looks like you're doing something. And you know, I always like to revert back to my holy word. My holy word tells us forsake the appearance. Of, so it looks oh. like you're doing something. If you're not doing something, it appears that you're doing something. And why would you want to sabotage your relationship and break the trust over something that you're not even doing? You know, right. that's just like lying well, to them and telling them, I'm out here cheating, and you ain't cheating. So, well, some people why do that, that anyway. Is- some people, some, some people, that's what they do to relationships anyway. They, it, it's getting to a point where they don't understand their feelings or they something maybe they never felt or they don't want to feel like this because, like, they don't want to come out and say that they're scared or whatever. So they start to do things, even if if you made if you were not doing anything at all and you made me feel like you were doing mm-hmm. something, it wouldn't be a trust issue. Um, it would just be an issue of because I talk about everything, so nothing is going to catch you by surprise. So I'm telling you that mm-hmm. this is what's going on and this is how I feel about it, and you don't make a change. Yeah. So the is, the issue would be that you make me feel like my feelings are not valid, and you're not willing to do whatever it is to make me feel secure in what it is that we have, you know, or make me feel, you know, a different way about something that I'm telling you is bothering me. It's not a ch- Yeah. Even if it's nothing and I feel like it's something, then you're not a person that I need because I'm not an accusatory person. I'm not a crazy person. I'm not busting up at your house. I'm not, you know, come out. I, I have stuff to do you know, whatever, and it don't include none of that. So if I'm feeling a certain kind of way and I express it and you're not willing to do something different, then, you know. So that's probably why I've never been married. Because <laughs> 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 I just don't have time for foolishness. I don't know. I mean, I can have my cards on the table. I just feel like, um, hey, there's, there's trust. Them. Like you said, you don't want to pick your phone at all. I don't care if my husband picks up my phone at all. I don't care if he picks up my phone. I don't care if he uses my phone. It's a phone. That's what you use it for to talk to people. I don't know. I just me, I keep saying I'm cutting my different talk because I don't care about all that. Long as you don't um long as you're not cheating, because I'm gonna find that out, you know. So as far as hiding stuff, my husband, he's technology well, he, is not, he is not good with that. He is not good with the technology. So if he's doing anything, I'm sure he's gonna find out, you know what I'm saying, because he's not good with technology. But as far as um, him having my past told, me having my past, uh, him having mine and me having his, I don't have an issue with that because, like I said, the only reason why we have past told is so if you lose your phone, no one can be out in your phone. That's all. You know. What if he needs your past yeah. code? If something happens to you, God forbid, he don't know your mom's number. Something happens to you and he needs to get in your phone to call your parents. That's my opinion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's see. Um, Miss Keisha, uh, I believe you have not brought about a topic. Am I correct? Um, that's correct. And um, so oh. I, I was listening to um, somebody that I know talk or whatever, and this person, so it was kind of like a group of us talking. And this person went from agreeing on something to not agreeing on it to not being sure about it or whatever, just all over the place. So my thing was, if you don't if you don't say it for something, you'll fall for anything. You know, it, um, if you if you have a feeling or if you believe 
in something nobody should be able to sway you from arguing down a point to, oh, well, you know, or whatever. I, I don't know. I guess I'm a very passionate person. I'm not a bandwagon person. So if I feel a certain kind of way about something, um, a hurricane can't move me, you know, or whatever. If, if I really feel about it and, and, and I'm mature enough, or whatever, and willing enough to say, okay, I, I accept your difference, but this is how I feel, you know, whatever. Um, standing for something doesn't mean necessarily agreeing with the masses or agreeing with what other people are saying. Right. It's just, you know, you you have a position in the situation that should not be able to be um, swayed from person to person to person to person. People like that are really dangerous. They'll have you all messed up. You know, um, um, with those kinds of things, you know, right. whatever. So, I don't know. That that's just how I feel. You 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 know, you have to you have to stand for something. Um, unless people have you all over the place, you have yourself all over the place. So, um, yeah, that's that's just what I thought about today. That was my topic: stand for something. Um, you know, don't allow people to sway you into believing or feeling something that you don't feel or um, believing in something that you really don't believe in. You know, I just feel like time is out for the go along to get along um, with people. People that you interact with or converse with on a regular basis should basically know you, and um, you shouldn't feel obligated to conform to their beliefs um, if it's the way that you feel. Hmm. Well, yeah, I get that because see, I'm the type of person. Um, I've been this way since I was young. You, if I have something in my head and I'm not gonna do what I'm not gonna do, you cannot convince me. Oh, then if you do this, this, and this in my head, if I say no, it's gonna be no. I'm not gonna let you sway me to the other side. We're not gonna do this here because when I usually um say no, it's because I know something is not gonna go right about the situation, so I'm good on that. And then you come back and you're like, I should have done that because this happened. And I'm just looking because, like, yeah, that's what I thought was going to happen. That's why I didn't do it. So, you know, I couldn't tell you not to do it. I just told you I wasn't going to do it. You know, so I can um, I can listen to and have a conversation with you. We can have a totally different opinions about the matter. We could have seen it. We could have been standing in front of each other. And something happened in front of us. And you see it one way, I see it another I'm not going to be upset or mad at you because you didn't come over to my side, and I hope you're not going to be mad at me because I wouldn't come over to your side like this. I really would care, but I don't know. I feel like you feel like you feel, and you, um, your opinion is your opinion. Don't let nobody change it. You know, that's your opinion. Don't cross over because you want somebody to be your friend or you want somebody to like you or um, you want to feel the same because I have always been the odd person out there. I'm all right with that. And that's part of why me and Sochi have known each other and, you know, like been around each other for so long because, you know, I mean, that's basically it. We have disagreed on some stuff in our lives. I mean, from, you know, um, young teenagers on up, we've disagreed with some stuff, but it, it has never been a case where something that she believed or felt affected, you know, us. Uh huh. You know, so. And that's what I love yeah. about friends and having their own different views and opinions. You can, you can actually see stuff through other sides, which you can, even if you feel like, no, nah, I can kind of see it. I can understand it. I can truly understand it, but if I don't feel that way, I can kind of understand it before you go on with that. But, you know, I still feel the way I feel. Right. I don't know. All righty. Uh... Um, Ms. Keisha brought the subject. Ms. Soltry discussed on it. And Ms. Rita, did you um, chime in on that subject? Um, I totally agree. Um, if you don't stand for something, you would definitely fall for anything. And that's kind of one of the principles I stand on in my life because most people think Mars and standards are old school. But um, I always tell them if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything because there's so many um, things out here pulling at you. And if you don't have a standard, you will fall 
in quite a few holes that you don't really plan to fall in because you have nothing to go by. You have no foundation. So um, I definitely agree with that because, um, like I said, there's so many things out here pulling at us to try to to get us to go go this way, go this way, think this way, and uh, even the words of the unstable my, uh, unstable uh, person is unstable in all their ways. So you have to have a foundation to stand up on and have something to go by a guide. And that's one reason, well, of course, I'm a believer, and that's one reason why I have the Word of God, and I have it because it gives me a standard. It gives me something to follow because life is broad, and if you don't have anything to keep you in control, your life will spin out of control very quickly and um, because you you don't have nothing to guide you. You have nothing to fall back on. So I definitely agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think very good topics, very good things to discuss. Um I'm going to um uh, go to the uh page and I'm gonna bring up a, a topic um that I was really curious about what everybody thinks about. And it's kind of, to me, I think it's just cut and dry. But um, if, if in, the, in the page, on the page, on the group, it is a picture with um, a little boy. He was graduating. And he had his mother and his father there. And he also had the mother's significant other boyfriend or and father significant other girlfriend um, there with them. And it the, the, the caption was basically um, his unity. And um, the, the post that I, I put, it was said, um, we need more of this uh, than bitter hearts. I seen someone comment that step parents should not be involved. What do you think? And for me, I think that uh, I think it's essential. You know, just because mommy and daddy is not together don't mean that they can't co-parent. And then because if you're not with the other person, then it's always that open door, that space in that mother and that father's life, that biological mother and that biological father's life, that they're going to have, uh, um, you know, a, a, a significant other. You know, because y'all not together, that don't mean that you cannot have no more boo things. Oh, well, we got a baby and we got a co-parent, so I can't have no boo thing because we got a co-parent. But if y'all not together, then, of course, it's that window, that door, that space in their life where they may want a boo thing, you know, one day. And if that boo thing gets with that, that woman or that man, I think that it should be uh, – um, uh, um, they should be involved in that kid's life on some level. The big major decisions, I believe, should be made by the biological and biological father and the biological mother. But far as support within it, I think that stepfathers and stepmothers have uh, um, has a, a right to be involved. Um, because when my when, if a man gets with me and I'm married now. He, my husband took my kids as a package deal, the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything else. And we, he, we stayed together. And um, we've been, been together for five years. Now, my youngest child was more uh, grew up in it. But with my older children, they were kind of halfway grown and kind of, you know, got catapulted into it because they was grown. They had been set in their age. And my daughter kind of helped how to um, – she she um, had a hard time with you know the adjustment, but my my oldest kid, which is my special needs kid, um, he is a little accepting at times. I think sometimes he he has hard times with it at times, but other times he's he's okay with it because he's not as verbal, so he don't express his stuff like my daughter would express herself. But um, if my husband's not around, he'd be like. Uh, Where's Dad? Or where's uh, uh, Nickelberry? Or 
They used to call him in the um, early stages of our relationship, Nick and Where's Nick and at? So um, we pretty much just kind of merged together, and the same thing with his kids. You know, those are my children. When they come, they come. You know, if he can't pick them up, I go pick them up. And his ex-wife had a really hard time with that. She was like, um, well, no, you can't pick him up if he's not there. And I'm like, I've been raising kids when you was in high school. What is the problem? You know, when they're sick, you know, they have these problems. If something happens, you can't handle it. I've always been raising children. So what is it that I can't handle? I have a special needs kid. So if your son has an asthma attack, which you think I can't handle it, I'm more equipped to handle it than most people are because I have a special needs kid. So um, pushing the subject, um, the topic on to somebody else, because I can talk about this subject forever and ever, 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 because it's something that's, you know, that's, I, I'm in, you know, I'm living through. Miss um, um, Keisha, what, do you, what is your chime in with this subject? Do you think that their parents need to step back and not get involved at all? Or what's your output on it? I think that step, um, step parents are essential. First of all, if um, my child is going to be involved with another person, I need to know that they are not crazy, in, in, in my opinion, of crazy. So I need to, um, I want to know this person. I don't want to aggravate this person or have um, crazy bad blood between us on my end. I can't control the other person. But on my end, I, you know, I, I don't want to have beef with that person. Um, if it's an ex-husband or, like, my daughter's daddy, I guess I could say, if he was with somebody else and my child and my daughter was going to be, you know, around him, around her, I want to know that, um, you know, she has some kind of values, morals. I want to know about it. You know, we, we need to have some, um, I like margaritas. We need to have a margarita time, you know, whatever, a glass of wine time, sit and talk, you know, to each other, void of him, void of her, or whatever, so that, you know, I can just put some things out there, whatever, and she can put some things out there, um, you know, whatever. I don't want him, you know, he's yours. (laughs) So I'm done with that, you know, whatever. So, um, you know, I would want to get all of those little, you know, any anchors, or anything that, um, you know, she may have as far as, you know, my attachment to him and, you know, things like that. I think that it's very essential, you know, especially if, if you're married. Now, girlfriends, I really don't, you know, don't really do girlfriends. My daughter is around me anyway. Like, she really, she can go, but she really don't want to go. I try to get her to go. But, um, yeah, but if it, maybe if it was a long-term relationship, you know, whatever it is, you know, I, I, she's not meeting every chick you deal with. But if it's, you know, a long-term relationship, then, yeah. You know, I want to know who my child is around and they do what, you know, or whatever exactly. And then just to make the situation comfortable or whatever. I'm not an angry black woman. You know, I want to give you a crown if you deserve one, you know. So I think it's essential. So the question okay, was if – good there. I, I definitely like that output on it, you know. That was definitely a, a, a spin to it for me, you know. Uh, if it's just a random girlfriend, then, of course, you wouldn't want them to brown your kid because it's just not somebody that's going to be there. You don't want people running in and out of your, your, your children's lives, of course. I can understand exactly. that. Uh, Ms. Rita, what's, what's your um, – your input on this subject. What do you think about um, step parents being involved in the kids' lives? I totally agree. I think it's very essential, especially like you said, if it's a stable relationship and is your spouse and not a temporary girlfriend that's going to be there for a couple of months, then you go into the next one. But if it's a, if both parents are um, in the relationship, a stable relationship, I think co-parenting is a great idea because at the end of the day, uh, parents are, you know, selfish. Some One partner may be selfish, but at the end of the day, they have to realize it's the child that's suffering. And right. um, so I think, you know, uh, the co-parenting is a great idea. And if you can co-parent, both you, uh, both parents are in their life, and if each, if both parents have a spouse, I think it should be okay. Now, 
And I've told somebody that recently. I was like, if anything, you would need to warn her husband or her wife to love your children because at the end of the day, that's who the ones that stay in the house with them. So um, you want you want that person to have the best interest at heart for your child because, like I said, they live in a home with them. So you can't disrespect the spouse or whatever because of the situation that you and the parent didn't work out. If your relationship didn't work out and it didn't work out, that's fine. Move on in life, but don't deprive the child of having both parents involved because at the end of the day, the child won't both of their parents involved in their life, even if you if even if you don't work out. So I think it's very essential, and as long as, like I said, the spouse of or the significant other in the relationship is treating your child fine and there is no abuse, no verbal abuse or not trying to teach you against them, I think it's great to uh, co-parent. And I think everybody should be involved, and I think it's a great support system. And like I said, I think it's very essential because the child is the one who's going to benefit from it in the long run. All right. Great, great top, great, great point. Um, I definitely think, and I think the, the the kid can actually benefit more. I mean, my husband was always the type of person where he'd say, "Well, you you're double blessed. You don't have just one mama. You have two moms. You don't have just one daddy. You have two daddies. So when you get birthday presents, not only do you get from from mama number one, you get from mama number two, and vice versa. That dad, mama, daddy number one, and daddy number two. So my husband, one type of people, he look at how he's going to him. This is going to benefit me. I'm going to get double the present. So, um, right. Miss Sotry, what do you think? Um, when it comes to step parents, um, I feel like they are simple. I get what um Keisha was saying. She don't want a lot of different children. I mean, guys I mean, girls around her daughter, and I totally get that. And I can use example with my daughter's dad. When we did not, we was not married, but when we broke up, we broke up. Did he have a lot of girls that were probably around my daughter? Possibly. Did I stop that? No. Did I talk to him about it? Yes. But then when he became married and I met his wife and I talked to her, I told, you know, um, I thought that she was there for my daughter. She loved my daughter just as much as I loved her. She did not um, disrespect her. She was kind to her. And um, my daughter and her are really close to that. And I love that. Me and my daughter and her sit on the phone with house. That's how close the relationship has got. So when it comes to telling us step parents shouldn't be involved, I doubt that. I mean, I don't think that's right because I don't even use step parents. My daughter does not call my husband um, step dad. She called him dad. She called daddy daddy. So I mean, I don't know. I just to me, it's, if you have somebody that's um, gonna treat your children like you would treat them when you're not there and love them and 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 talk to them and encourage them and motivate them. I have no issue with that. Now, as far as what he said, having this family do around him, nobody wants that. But can you stop that if your child is over there and going to visit their, their dad or uh, mom every other weekend? You can't stop that. You can talk to the parents, but you can't stop it. So, but that's not a step parent. Step parent is when you are married. So I think that if you have a step parent that loves your kids, don't have an issue with it. Be happy that that man has someone that's going to love your child. Or be happy that that woman has someone that's going to treat your child like this. You know, that's what we want. We want a person to be able to treat, love our kids like we love them. And so I don't think that um, if there's a graduation, all of them should be that. Everybody that's going to support that child, love that child, and consider their child to be that, whether it's their parent or not. So that's my take on that. Can I say something right clear? Yes, ma'am. Um, okay, so, like, I was just recently involved with the situation, which I had nothing to do with it. I was just a middle person going to do my little due diligence, and I can tell. So it was like the stepmom had raised the child because the dad has custody of her. And um, I, I'm not sure what the real biological parent um, how involved she is, but when I came to the situation, um, you can feel and see the tension in between the family, 
And mm-hmm. like I said, which I personally had nothing to do with either side of it. I was just offered my due diligence for something I signed up for, which I didn't talk to neither side of the family because I didn't know yeah. one side personally at all. So um, I just, but you can see the tension in the between the family. And the child is kind of like stuck right in smack in the middle. And it, it's like when her other side of the family came, she ran and hugged them and they glad to see him. But you can tell the step parent because that's who raised her. So basically she like, that's my baby. Like, like the biological parent is not quite, I mean, she may be in and out there her life, but you're not, she technically doesn't live in your home. So basically you do more of the raising than she had to. So, but I just kind of hate when children involved in situations like that, because had everybody, it had been a more nicer event if, you know, the family communicated, there's no tension, the child can be comfortable with um, both sides, and you know, it can be more smooth if um, it's like everything has to go underhand, this sneaky communication, and it's like the child want to be part of both sides of her family. However, because, and it's, and, and I can't stand it because technically the child is the one who's suffering with whatever happened years ago to the reason why my daddy has custody of me and I can't speak to uh, my mom's side of the family or whatever the case is, I don't see them often. And the child is stuck in the middle, confused and worried and concerned and why I can't speak because I personally deal with a situation like that myself because I raised my niece. Um, She doesn't have contact with her mom's side of the family. And it's not because it's something that took place years ago, but the child is the one who's stuck smack in the middle for whatever reason, the other parent, whatever happened during that time. And so that's why I think it's very important that each each parent should still be able to co-parent if they choose to. Now, some things you, can't, you don't have control over, and yeah. if the other parent do not want to act right, you have to get a restraining order. If they bitter and they upset and they threaten you, that's another story. But I think if everybody's have... A, um, sound mind in the situation that they should be involved because uh, I, I really hate the fact that you don't know your mom's side of the family because that because uh, now you you still it become an identity issue because you're trying to figure out okay who I am really I don't know there are certain attributes that you have that I don't know where they come from but it may come from your mom's side of the family because you don't know. <laughs> So it's just, I think it's very important, is you know, like I said, parents and adults have to put their selfishness to the side and think about the child. Like, I don't have to have talk with you, but don't speak against who's taking care of her. Like the lady, right, I think exactly. she kind of felt some kind of way because she's like, I'm the one who raised this. And when I spoke with her, I'm like, ma'am, no disrespect because I don't know what they, what's going on? I'm just here to do my little due diligence, due diligence, diligence that I signed up for. But I mean, no disrespect, because I knew her, the other mom. I knew her personally, but I yeah. don't talk to her. This is something we. I knew her as a kid. Yeah. And so um, I had to apologize to the other lady that raised, because you know she felt like this is my child. Like although I didn't have her, I raised her. <laughs> so which I totally understand, because I feel that way concerning my niece. So, um, and it's just like, oh, if her mom pop up right now, I'm going to feel some kind of way, too, because I've been doing all the work. So I totally understood that. So, I, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I think it's kind of, for for me, because I've seen all kinds of scenarios. Uh, My mother was raised by uh, an aunt. She raised her as a kid. You know, she had been with her for, since she was three years old. This was her kid, you know, and her biological mother lived somewhere else. And I can only imagine, you know, the, the tension it, tension that was potentially there. I'm a type of mother like this. I raise my babies. Those are my babies. Ain't nobody else going to raise my babies. But I'm that type of mother. And I did not let anything deter me from taking care of my kids or take me away from taking care of my kids. You know, I know what 
um, the club does, the excessive club going does. I know what the excessive drink goes. And I, I, just, I felt like if I did any of those things and drugs and so forth, that would take me away from being with my children um, or has a potential to take me from being with my children. So I've seen all kinds of scenarios. But at the same flip side of that, I think it has to be a balance there. Although you take care of that kid that's not biologically yours, but you take care of you raising. You know, the old saying goes, just because a dog has a baby don't mean make it a mama, which is very true. But on the flip side of that, I think it should be a, a, a balance there. I think it should be a kind of respect. Respect is not something that's always, I don't believe respect is not something that's always earned by a person, I'm going to respect the person no matter if they respect themselves, and that's just me, you know. So it's a level of respect that, that is that kid's mother. And so it may not be no disrespect to her. That might be something that's in her head because if she knows what she did to get in that particular predicament, not knowing the backstory of it, don't know how she got to be in somebody else's household. But it should be a, a level of respect that that's still mama no matter what. But, again, it might be something that's in that mother's head. She may be dreaming up something in her head thinking, well, she thinks she all that. She got my baby in, and, you know, that's my child. You know, I gave birth to that kid. So I know how overprotective I would be if I was in that position. So I made it my business not to put myself in that position because I know I would feel some kind of way if I walked in the house or uh, walked to an event and I, I feel like, you know, she's trying to overshadow me as a mother. So I just made sure I never put myself in that position, you know, that kept me motivated to do what's right, you know, no matter what. I mean, that that's that's a hard field to walk. It's so many different scenarios and so many different yes. twists and turns and so many different moving parts to that particular situation. And I believe that if everybody had a level of had a respect, not for that mother, not for that father, but also for that kid, you know, how you would feel if somebody were making you feel like you have to make a choice and choose one person over another person. And I would never try, I never tried to make my children feel like they had to make a choice between, you know, me or somebody else. My daughter, for yeah. example, I remember we had, we had got into an altercation and she made a comment that, um, she's tired of being put in the middle of it. And I looked at her like, who's putting you in the middle of it? I've always tried not to. Now, I, I can't tell her how she's feeling, but me on this end, I've always tried not to put her in situations because when she was a kid, I didn't bring her into a, a whole lot of – I didn't bring her into certain conversations. When certain things were going a certain way in my life, I didn't tell my kids what was going on for what. That's not their job to be worried about that. I don't want my kids stressed out. I want them to be to enjoy life, be a child, be a kid, have a childhood, and not have to worry about adult-like things. Yeah. Wow. Especially as a small kid. Yeah, I totally Ma'am, I mean, very good topics. I, I, I love the topics. Um what I want to do is, because I, I have the opportunity to see, and I know it's being recorded, but um, I have an opportunity to see the actual board and actual callers. Um, what I would like to do, um, ladies, um, I want to be able to have a, 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 a meeting with y'all. Um, put in the messenger how you want to do it. If you want to do it as a Zoom, we could do it as a Zoom. That way we could all have a face-to-face. Do y'all have time after the show because we're wrapping it up in six minutes? Right. Yeah. Well, yeah you know, I, you have about, I guess about 15 minutes. You know you can create rooms now. on Facebook now. Uh, yeah, well, we sure can. I forgot all about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a room so we can um, have a, a little quick discussion. Um, let's go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and do the, the um, ending out music and we can go ahead and squash, you know, close the show on out. Uh, if do Miss Keisha give me some give me about um, a thirty second closing top a closing um, uh, statement so we go ahead and close this on out. Keisha on mute. Okay, here I go. 
I just want to thank everybody for joining in. Um, they joined in today. Look forward to hearing from you um, next week. If you are um, on and you were here this week, invite somebody to um, to to come in and listen um, next week. So, and if you have topics, please inbox me, and I'll make sure that um, you know that I bring your topic to the forefront. Thank you. All right, rocking, rocking, rocking. Uh, Miss uh, Rita, go ahead and, and give us a closing statement. Yes, thank you all for um, the show today. I enjoyed the topics. Thank everyone for joining in today. And like we said, please join us in next week, Wednesday at 10 a.m. Enjoy your day. All right. Miss Soul Tree. Yes. I would like to thank everybody for joining in on the Hot Topic that we had today. They were awesome. I love you guys. See y'all the same channel, same time next week. Until then, it's Soul Tree. I am her, she is me, and I am everything. Yes, indeed. Right. Well, thank you so much for um, joining us. Um, um, if you come back and listen to the replay, please get into the group or go into the page and let us know what you're thinking. We want to hear your comments. We're going to hear, hear about your concerns. We want to hear if you're interested in any sponsorship packages. We want to be knowing. We want to know if you want to do any advertisement with um, Sisters United Talk Show. As well as don't forget about our cups. We have some cups and we have some shirts to represent. So while you're sitting on the phone with us or um, are, are, are sitting on the Internet listening to us, you can have your tea, you can have your coffee, you can have your juice, whatever you want to have in that Sister United Talk Show Cup. Thank you so much for listening. Everyone have a blessed week. Be safe out there. Peace and bless. Thank you. Welcome to Eagles United Ministries, where we are breaking the yoke of bondage through the power of the Word of God. This is Pastor Jay and Evangelist Hill. We are about to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with you. If you want to call into our live show, call call in at 347-826-9424. We want you to remember that without faith, it's impossible to please God, but with God, all things are possible. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. We're everywhere. All you got to do is Google My Gospel Soul Radio, and you'll find us. We want to make sure we're always sharing a word that will inspire and encourage your spirit. Now, let's get into the show. Mm-hmm.